Meanwhile, North Korea has launched yet another what is being described as an unidentified projectile. The reports indicate that the projectiles were short-range ballistic missiles. In fact, and this is North Korea's third missile launch in a span of over a week. The South Korea's military has said that they were fired from North Korea's South Hamyong province into the East Sea in the wee hours of this morning. But the Japanese Ministry of Defense has said that there is at this point of time no immediate impact on the nation's security as the missile did not reach its territory. Meanwhile, U.S. President Donald Trump has underplayed the latest launches by North Korea, saying that they were only short-range missiles and therefore have not necessarily broken the pledge made by Kim Jong-un to Donald Trump. Now, he said that Kim Jong-un did not violate his promises as they never discussed short-range ballistic missiles with North Korea. They had discussed nuclear weapons. They had also discussed long-range ballistic missiles, one would assume. He has, however, dismissed concerns with the launches, saying that other countries have tested those kind of missiles before, and therefore this should not be a matter of concern. Short-range missiles, we never made an agreement on that. I have no problem. We'll see what happens. But these are short-range missiles. They're very standard. Now, remember, the launches have taken place despite the historic meeting between Donald Trump and Kim Jong-un at the demilitarized zone, where they agreed to revive talks. The U.S. National Security Advisor John Bolton has said that the United States was pretty ready for work-level negotiations and was waiting to hear from North Korea. Meanwhile, South Korea has convened an emergency security meeting to discuss the third launch by North Korea. The country is monitoring the situation very closely in case of additional launches. And on Wednesday, leader Kim Jong-un oversaw the first test firing of a new type of what was described as a large caliber multiple launch guarded rocket system. The North Korean media has reported that the test verified the combat effectiveness of the overall system. On the 25th of July, North Korea launched two more short-range missiles. Now, 14 days after the International Court of Justice verdict, Pakistan has offered conditional consular access to Indian prisoner Kulbushan Jadhav. However, the Pakistani Foreign Ministry has proposed certain conditions for the meeting. They may have invited the Indian diplomats at 3 p.m. today to meet with Jadhav, but as per the Pakistani proposal, one Pakistani representative will also be present in the meeting. Now, another condition that has been set by Pakistan is that the meeting will be monitored by CCTV cameras in the room. Now, India seems to have reservations about these conditions, highlighting this issue in a press conference yesterday. The Indian Ministry of Foreign Affairs has revealed that they are currently in the process of evaluating Pakistan's proposal in the wake of the ICJ judgment and that any reply to the Pakistani government will only be sent through proper diplomatic channels. Listen in. I can only tell you that uh, we have received a proposal from Pakistan. We are at this point of time evaluating the proposal in the light of the judgment of the International Court of Justice. We will maintain communication with Pakistan in this matter through diplomatic channels. Now remember, 49-year-old Jadhav was kidnapped from Balochistan by the Pakistani security forces in March 2016 on the allegation that he was involved in espionage. But last month, the International Court of Justice had ordered Pakistan to suspend Jadhav's death sentence. The ruling, of course, has come as a big diplomatic victory for India, which had rejected Pakistan's allegation that Jadhav is a spy.